Hey guys, my name's Jackson and in this video I'm going to show you a little bit of what I've learned and a couple of tips and tricks about how to design your blueprints in a way that they are modular and reusable. Um, and the reason for that is because I've been developing for about five years now and every time I start a new project something that I have always been frustrated with is when I try and migrate stuff from previous projects into the new project because I might have some like code or something that I want to reuse and I get frustrated because I find that those old assets have often been um, designed quite poorly and have all these dependencies and things that they need to drag with it when I migrate them to the new project. Um, and then I need to go in and edit code to make it work with the new stuff and so on. And so I've over the years I've learned a couple of tricks that I'm going to teach to you now um, which can help you avoid those scenarios and design your blueprints in a way that they make sense in various different scenarios and in various different projects so that they're not bound up in one particular project and the term for that is modularity like making things generalized um, and you do that with interfaces and actors so I'll just I'll show you I'll show you what I mean um, so I'm in a third person example template and I'm in Unreal Engine 5.3 and today what we're gonna make um, if I just pull up my notes on my second screen um, let's make a flashlight blueprint for our character. So at the moment We've just got a character like this and say you want to add in a flashlight one way that people can do this is you can just do it inside of your um, Player character, but the problem with that is the flashlight if you think about a flashlight <laughs> um, In the way that a flashlight works in a real world. It's not a part of your fucking hand It's not a part of a character or a person. It's an independent object and so it makes sense if you're making a game to do your flashlight as an independent object. So let's um, create a new blueprint of actor. I'm going to call this BP flashlight and just open that up. So if we make a flashlight, we'll have a static mesh, which could be a cylinder. If I can fucking spell today, that'd be nice. A cylinder like that. Um, I'll have it facing towards the X axis and I'll just make it nice and small like that. That's a flashlight, right? <laughs> Pretty good flashlight. Now, um, we'll need a spotlight as well. Spotlight, boom. And then the light is just going to come out of the end of that and just crank up these values here so we can see it for our little demo that we've got going on. Now, um, if I put this in the game, that's a flashlight, right? That's definitely a flashlight. That's doing the job. Um, but now let's give it to our character. So if we go to third person character, you could have created a flashlight in here, but by creating it as an actor, what we can do now is we can say child actor up here. And I'm going to go CA for child actor and then just go flashlight. And then we're going to set this child actor component thing to flashlight. Okay, and now we could attach this to our character's hand or whatever, but I'm just going to put it down there by, by their hand. Um, and so if I jump in now, we have a flashlight. It's not attached to our hand, but it's in the game, right? So that's already cool, because now our flashlight isn't dependent upon being in a third-person character, this third-person character. And if we wanted to migrate this fresh flashlight to a new project, we could just drop that onto the new character and they could use the same flashlight as in the previous game. Um, so now let's do some events with this flashlight. So the first thing that we want to do, um, let's open up our flashlight. Let's create some functionality to turn it on and off. So let's have a variable down here, which I'm going to just call um, r underscore light, light on. Um, and I call it R underscore because I'm going to use this replication tab here. Uh, I'm going to use rec notify. This is typically a multiplayer thing, but I'm just going to do it there because I just I like doing stuff this way. So now, whenever we set R slash light on, this event here is going to fire. And so what we can do, this R on rep R light on. Um, so whenever this changes this event's going to fly out, what we're going to do is we're going to toggle the visibility of our spotlight. So we're going to say set visibility. And the new visibility is going to be the light on like that. And we could also, if we wanted, we could spawn a sound. Um, 
Is there like a click or something? Flashlight switch, that's perfect. <laughs> um, and so now let's say uh, on begin play for the flashlight, we're just gonna toggle this light on and off, just like this. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna strobe it, okay? This is just gonna flick it on and off every point two seconds. All right, check that out. Okay, so that's that's demonstrating that the light on and off works. Now let's say that we wanted to do this inside of our character. What we could do now. Um, in our third person character, let's say we input our right mouse button and that's going to be our light switch button. Um, one way to do this would be to go flashlight, um, get child actor, and then what you'd do is you'd cast your flashlight and then get the variable and blah blah blah, but there's actually no need to have this dependency here because if you were going to migrate this character out of your project, and this cast node in, is in here, that's going to take the flashlight with it, which you might not necessarily want. So this is where interfaces come into play. So an interface is a way to pass a variable like a boolean or an integer or a float or whatever between different blueprints without making those blueprints directly dependent on each other. So you can think of it like you've got blueprint A here, blueprint B here, and if you've designed your code poorly, they're going to be directly communicating to each other and tangled together in a big dependent mess. Um, but if you have blueprint A and blueprint B, and then down the middle you have an interface, both of those blueprints can communicate with the interface without um, directly needing to communicate with each other. And then what you can do is you can migrate blueprint A out or blueprint B out, and there's no need for it to take each other with it. It'll just take the interface. So an interface is like a nice way to cut off the dependencies of an actor and have it cleanly interface with any other actor you want it to interface with. So let me go into our BP flashlight, let's go blueprint um, BP I for blueprint interface and let's just call this, um, this can be our activate interface, okay? And then we're going to have a new function which is just going to be called, um, I don't know, try activate. And maybe what we'll do is we'll have a new variable on this which can be called new active, question mark, new active. And then this is going to be the um, this is going to be the variable that will be interfacing between the blueprints. So if we go into now our um, blueprint flashlight, we need to tell it to use this interface. So go class settings interfaces. Uh, what do we call it? BPI activate. Compile that. Now down here in the bottom left, if you right click this and say implement event, we now have this event here, um, and we have the new active which is coming with it. So now what we can do is we can grab our light on and then set that to whatever this is being called as. Um, so now what we need to do is call this from our play character. So whenever we right click the mouse button, now what we can do is from this child actor, we can say, try activate. And whenever we right click, it's gonna send this interface message, but we wanna be able to turn it on and off. So let's put a flip flop here as well. And then connect that like that. And then put that in there like that. Okay, so now it's starting on because um, in the flashlight blueprint, that light is already on by default. But if we on begin play, set light on to light off like that, it'll start with the light off and then it'll turn on when we click to activate. All right, it's off. And now if I right click, there you go. Um, yep. So the purpose of doing that with the interface in between is to make it so that I can migrate out this third person character or migrate out this flashlight without them having direct dependencies on each other. At the moment if I attempt to migrate this, migrate this third person character, it will have a reference to the flashlight because the flashlight is just here. But if I deleted that component and then went into my content browser and then hit migrate, um, down in this list the flashlight would no longer appear because the flash flashlight is not act, wouldn't actually be referenced in the blueprint. You could keep all of this here that I've highlighted um, and then just delete the child actor reference and then you could migrate this to a new project without any fucking around whatsoever. And then the same with the flashlight. With the flashlight now, if I search for flashlight down here and then control B to browse, if I attempt to migrate this, you can see all it takes is just the blueprint flashlight and the blueprint 
interface activate and has no reference to the third person character because it doesn't need it. Um, if you were to use cast two nodes, they would need each other and they'd all come together when you tried to migrate it. Now, there is another benefit to doing things like this and that is that there could be multiple ways to turn on this flashlight. This could be in a hand, someone's hand, like we've done here with that character, but there's no need for this light switching on and off functionality to be completely dependent on a character activating it. So to show you what I mean by that, maybe what we could do is if we create a new blueprint class and then call this BP sensor, we can create a sensor blueprint which when you walk in front of it, the light turns on. So let me show you how to do that. And again, we can do this in a way such that this is modular and that this sensor doesn't even need to activate a flashlight specifically, but could activate any other actor that you wanted. Um, so anyway, for a sensor to work, let's um, let's give it a static mesh component so that we can visually see it. So um, I don't know, what could we use? We could just use a cube. And we'll give it a box collision. And I'll just call this C underscore overlap, C for collision underscore overlap. Delete everything in there, right click, uh, on component begin overlap. When this box collision overlaps an actor, which I'll just, I'll drag the box collision out in front of it. Um, and I don't know, we'll make it a little bit bigger. That can be the, the sensor range. You could make it bigger, you could do it however you wanted. But um, when this begins overlapping something, um, what we're going to do. We're going to need two of these actually. Let's call this um, trigger overlap, and then we might I might duplicate that and have another one which is called uh, C underscore activation bounds, and then this one can be like quite quite larger, quite a lot larger. And so when we overlap this um, box in here, what this actor is going to do, the sensor is going to activate any activatable actors within inside this this bounds. So when this begins overlap, the trigger overlap, what we'll do is we will um, get the activation bounds and say get overlapping actors. Um, and then for each overlapping actor, you could do this with the direct reference as well, but let's just activate them all because I feel like that makes sense. If you've got, yeah, if you've got a setup like this, it's like it sends out like a radio signal basically to everything inside this massive um, bounding box and then just activates them all. So then, yeah, we get them all and then what we're going to do is we're going to use our try activate message. Like that, yeah. So maybe what we could do is um, let's have it turn off when we leave as well. So if I add a reroute node over here, collapse this to a function which can be called toggle activations and then refresh, delete that, new active, and then if we right click the trigger again, and then end overlap, we can set new active to false. So now if we were to put our sensor in the game, the sensor could be right there, like that, and when we walk in front of it, we're gonna have it activate some lights. So we could literally put the lights in wherever, we could put one above the box, I feel like that's a cool place for the first one. I might just change my snapping up here real quick. Maybe not that much. Just like that. So now when we walk in front of it, let's have it activate. So you ready? Dun dun. Oh, it activated the one I'm holding as well. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, we could add another one in. Like we could have some... I don't know, maybe there's some like above the character or something that you want to activate. Like if you were walking into a house and you wanted automatic lights. You walk in and now we've got lights coming from above as well. Yeah. Um, and again, so this, this sensor now, this is not actually dependent on the flashlight whatsoever. Um, it's just a completely independent thing that can do its own activation and whatnot. So one last thing, just to drive the point home, this um, blueprint sensor, this yeah doesn't need to be tied to light specifically. We could have this interact with another blueprint entirely. So if we were going to have um, another blueprint, we could call this BP underscore door. And if we put a static mesh on this door, I wonder if we have an actual door static mesh. Have we got one? Yeah, we got a door. That's cool. 
So that's a door, and we can do a similar thing to what we did with the flashlight in here. So what we'll do is we'll give it a blueprint interface, BPI activate, and then when we try to activate, implement that event, we will set a new variable which is called R open question mark. And if we set the replication conditions to rep notify, um, whenever this fires, what we could do is we could, maybe if this is true, let's just permanently open the door. How about that? You could have this just toggle the visibility or rotate the door or whatever. But if R open is set to true, then let's just destroy the door. <laughs> yeah, like I said, you could rotate it to open and close, but let's just say whenever this activates, um, the door opens permanently. So what we could do now is if we put our door just over here, that could be like an entrance to a new area. At the moment, it's locked. Can't off. Oh, <laughs> you're not meant to be able to walk through a fucking door, but it doesn't have collision on it. Um, and then when we walk in front of this trigger, nothing happens, which is very interesting, probably because it doesn't have any collision on it, perhaps. So if I give it a box collision, I wonder if that'll work now. Yeah, okay, so now that we've overlapped the sensor, the sensor has then activated everything within its activation radius, which is all the torches and all the lights, and it's also activated the door. And now because the door has been destroyed, when I leave this box, it won't come back, but all the lights turn off. And I can still turn my light on and off individually because I have functionality inside my character blueprint. And we have an error, oh, because I entered the box several times. Yeah, so what you'd want to do is you'd want to convert that to a validated get so that it doesn't try to destroy the, the door multiple times. So that's a little bit about Blueprint interfaces and Blueprint modularity. Um, that's only just touching the surface. There's a lot that you can do with these things, and they're actually quite incredible. And um, if you'd like more on this topic, like leave me a comment so that I know. And if you want to support the channel, I've got Marketplace links and whatnot in the description as well. That'd be great if you could check that out. Um, but yeah, let me know if this was helpful and if you like this sort of content. <laughs> okay, bye.